thinking of moving to Denver, Colorado and wondering what you don't know? Well, today I'm going to share nine things that you might not know about living in Denver, Colorado. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Kathy Hansen, a local area realtor and I'm also a suburban mom. Now I get reach outs every day of people calling and texting me asking some of these questions which is why I do these videos. And today we're going to talk about some things that you might not know or consider when moving to Denver, Colorado. The first thing is our altitude. We sit at 5,280 feet. 5,280 feet is a mile, a mile long, which is why Denver is known as the Mile High City. Being at 5,280 feet in altitude, our air is thinner here, which means you get out of breath more often. You might find yourself walking up a set of stairs when you're at sea level, no problem. You come to altitude and you're gonna find yourself out of breath. So it does take some acclimating to our higher altitude. It does take some getting used to it. Now, altitude sickness is a very real thing. And people who come to our altitude or come higher in level and elevation and they're not used to it, there's some things you can do to alleviate or prevent altitude sickness. And one of those is water. So we here in Denver, we drink a lot of water. It's regular for you to see people walking around with their water bottles everywhere. You're probably not from Denver if you don't have one with you at all times. Well, that definitely helps prevent dehydration. Even in the winter times, you have to drink a lot of water. When it's cold outside and you're not sweating and you're not hot, you don't realize you're dehydrated and you need that water all year round here because of our altitude. So first things, water. Second, if you come and you're getting headaches and you're feeling the symptoms of altitude sickness, dizziness and headaches, um, lethargy, dehydration, oxygen helps. Oxygen helps with the altitude, it helps with altitude sickness. And then the other part about our climate is that it's dry here. So your skin is dry, your lips are dry, you are going to use chapstick a lot. And the other thing we also recommend is sunscreen. Now we are 5280 in altitude, that puts us a mile closer to the sun. And here in Colorado, some people say we get 300 days of sunshine, some people say we get 250 days of sunshine, whatever it is, somewhere in the middle, we get a lot of days of sunshine here, even in the winter months. So sunscreen in the winter months is just as important as sunscreen in the summer months here. And as we're talking about our weather with our 300 and some days of sunshine, now we do get hailstorms here. And because of our hailstorms, well, our insurance rates are a little higher than pretty much most of the rest of the country. But the good news is the hailstorms don't last long. Sometimes they come in with a vengeance and they can cause property damage or damage to your cars. But the good news is here, we don't have earthquakes, we don't have tornadoes, we don't even have bugs really. So we don't get some of those things that other parts of our country do, which makes this a really great place to live. Now, the third thing about the Denver metro area is we are a sports city. We have five professional sports teams here right in Denver. We have Denver Broncos, we have baseball, the Colorado Rockies, we have our basketball team, the Denver Nuggets, we have our MLS or soccer team, which is the Rapids, and then we also have a professional lacrosse team, the Mammoth. So at any time of the year, you can find a professional sporting event to attend, and occasionally, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally, we could have three different sporting events going on kind of at the same time in Denver. If we are in Rocktober, which is what we call here in Denver when the Rockies make it to the playoffs, well, Rocktober, we could have a Broncos game and we could also have the Denver Nuggets playing as well. So it's kind of an exciting time if Rocktober does really happen. The fourth thing is the cost of homes here. And I talk about this a lot. It just is what it is. Our cost of homes here, we are well above the national average in the price of purchasing a home. Our average purchase price is above the 600,000 mark here in the Denver metro area. We're nationwide, it's about 425. So that just shows you how high our prices are here in the Denver metro area. And there's so many factors that play into that. Um, 
It could be the supply and demand issue. It could be that Denver is just a really great place to live and our population is increasing and booming. It could be that we have a really great business infrastructure here. We have lots of businesses moving to the Denver metro area. Those things contribute to our higher home prices here in the Denver metro area. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is marijuana. Yes, we have marijuana here and it's legal. We were one of the first states to legalize it. I think it was 2013 that it became legal here in Colorado. Now you are not gonna see a bunch of stoned people walking around our cities. No, it's just not like that. The marijuana here, there are lots of dispensaries. There are certain cities or municipalities that do allow dispensaries in their area. There are certain ones that don't allow it. And the ones that do allow it, well, some of them have guidelines or restrictions on how many there can be in their city, or they're only allowed in certain areas. So there's different things depending on the cities that you look at. But the marijuana here it is not intrusive. It's not what most people think coming from states where marijuana is not legal. You don't see a bunch of stoned people walking around. You don't smell it everywhere you go. Occasionally you'll get a whiff of it when you're out at a park or walking outside or a downtown area or in different areas of the city, you might get in a whiff, an occasional whiff of it. It is not something you're going to smell every day. People here are very respectful about it. So number six is you don't have to ski to live here. Now, many people do. Many people take advantage of our world-class skiing in the mountains just an hour and a half, two hours away from the Denver metro area. But if skiing is not your thing, there are so many other mountain activities you can participate in if skiing's not your thing. Um, you can snowmobile, you can snowshoe, you can go snow tubing, you can take a horse-drawn carriage through the snow. They have big catmobiles that are like these big, huge pieces of equipment with these almost tractor-like wheels. You can take tours in those. So there's so many things that you can do to participate in the winter activities up in our mountains, even if skiing is not your thing. The seventh thing is Red Rocks Amphitheater. So Red Rocks Amphitheater, that should be a bucket list item for anybody. It's a very cool outdoor amphitheater that was carved right out of the Red Rocks. And so the acoustics there are fantastic. It's a wonderful place to see a concert. It should be on everybody's bucket list because you do get to see the skyline of Denver from there. And when you're there and the sun is setting, it's just an awesome place for a concert. Now the venue isn't that big. I think it only holds 10, 12, maybe 15,000 people. So you don't get the big named artists there, the artists that are bringing in 70,000 people to a concert because the size of it just isn't big enough for them but there's some really great concerts that happen there and it should be a bucket list item for everyone. Now, if concerts aren't your thing, then they also have movies on the rocks. So during the summer months, they have movies on the rocks and lots of people go to see some old run movies, family, friends, all kinds of people are there at the movies on the rocks. They also do yoga on the rocks, which is really fun. Um, a Saturday or a Sunday morning, you can buy your ticket and go do yoga on the rocks um, with the instructors that are right there on stage teaching, oh gosh, hundreds of people yoga. The setting is just amazing. And then right around Red Rocks, well, there's lots of hiking trails and paths that you can go on. And if you're a people watcher, well, just going there on a Saturday morning, maybe you're gonna go for a short hike, but if you go to the actual amphitheater itself, there are lots of people that are working out there in the amphitheater that are doing stair climbs and stair runs. Um, I have seen some amazing workout things happen there at Red Rocks Amphitheater, things that I didn't even think, think people did, where people were doing push-ups all the way down the amphitheater and all the way back up. Um, it's not a big amphitheater, but it is fairly steep. So I am always in amazement when we are there with guests or out-of-towners and we're taking them to see Red Rocks, the stuff that we see people doing there on a Saturday and Sunday morning in regards to their health and fitness is just awe-inspiring. The eighth thing is our craft brewery scene. Now, Denver has a huge craft brewery scene. We have over 150 breweries in the Denver metro area. So if beer is your thing, well, you're gonna have a heyday here because you have 150 different breweries that you can go visit. 
We are also home to one of the largest craft beer festivals. And so that's a fun thing to do on the weekend as well. Now our craft brewery scene, well, it's also very dog friendly. So there are some breweries where you can bring your dogs with you. We here in Colorado, we tend to take our dogs everywhere and taking them to the breweries and having a beer while your dogs are running outside and playing with other dogs. Well, it's kind of a fun thing to do on a warm uh, summer or fall or spring afternoon. Enjoy a craft beer and let your dogs play with some other dogs. And then the last thing is our international airport. Our international airport, you can get to it pretty much from the farthest point in the metro area in about 50 to 60 minute drive. So our international airport sits at the northeast corner of the metro area. So if you are in the very southern tip or if you're in the southwest corner, you're looking at a 45 to 60 minute drive out to the airport. But once you're at the airport, now the airport, I think we're the second largest in geographic space for the airports. I think we're about the fifth busiest airport. Um, but once you get to the airport, it is very easy to maneuver. It's very easy to get around there inside the airport. And our airport, because we are not quite the middle of the country, but we're pretty close, you can get to most places in the country fairly easy from here. So flying in and out of Denver, one, physically isn't hard, and two, being able to travel to different parts of the country is very easy from Denver. It is a very busy airport, lots of flights in and out, and it is an international airport as well. So going to different countries, um, easy travel that way too. Now those are just nine general things about living in the Denver metro area. If you are looking for some more specific information in regards to certain cities, areas, or neighborhoods, I'm happy to provide that information to you as well. Again, I'm a local realtor and I'm in the business every day. So if there's different parts of the, the metro area that you're interested in, I would love to provide you with some more information about that. I would love nothing more than to be a resource for you with all of your real estate needs here in the Denver metro area. Now, if you can do me one favor and hit that subscribe button, then you'll be notified when I post new videos all about living in the Denver metro area. I do these every Tuesday, every other Friday is new home tours. And also hit that like button below as I like to know that this content is valuable to you, that you like it. It keeps me engaged so that I can create other content about living in the Denver metro area. Now that's all I have for you for now. So I will see you on the next video.